praise this morning to the one that deserves the highest praise. We worship Emmanuel, our God that is always with us. We thank our Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is ever present. We thank our Yahweh, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning of the works of God, the one that reigned forevermore. We give him the glory. He is mighty. He is awesome. He is glorious, faithful God. He is our ever-present help in time of need, our helper, our hiding place, our brother, that's, our friend that sticketh closer than our brother. What a mighty God we serve. He is the Lord and there is no other. He alone deserves the, high, the highest praise. From the rising of the sun to the setting down of the sea, his name is worthy to be glorified. We worship his excellency, majesty, all-sufficient God, the one that is more than enough, the owner of the breath that we breathe. He is the Lord. There is no one beside him. We say, hallowed be his name forever and ever. Child of God, our God is mighty to save. We say, blessed be his name forever. Beloved child of God, Jesus is coming soon. The Son of Man is coming soon. He has promised and he will never fail. He has promised he will never fail. We give him the glory and we give him the honor. The Lamb of God that was slain even from the foundation of time. The greatest lover of our soul. We say blessed be his name forever. What a mighty God. A Lord. It is the will of God that he will spend eternity with us. Because of that he comes to unveil the strategies of Satan to us. Why? So that we will take heed. Child of God. So that we will take heed. And so this morning. The Lord wants to talk to us about pers persuasion, the strategy of Satan. What a mighty God we serve. Can we turn our Bibles this morning to 2 Chronicles chapter 24? 2 Chronicles 24, and I am reading from verse 1 to verse 6. What a mighty God we serve. The Bible says that Joash was seven years old when he became king. And he reigned in Jerusalem 40 years. His mother was Zibia from Bathsheba. Joash did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight throughout the entire lifetime of Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada chose two wives for Joash, and he had sons and daughters. At one point, Joash decided to repair and restore the temple of the Lord. He summoned the priests and the Levites and gave them these instructions. Go to all the towns of Judah and collect the required annual offerings so that we can repair the temple of your God. Do not delay. But the Levites did not act immediately. So the king called for Jehoiada, the high priest, and asked him, Why haven't you demanded that the Levites go out and collect the temple tax? from the towns of Judah and from Jerusalem. Moses, the servant of the Lord, levied this tax on the community of Israel in order to maintain the tabernacle of the covenant. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is talking to us today from the life of Joash. A king of Israel that reigned in Jerusalem for 40 years. The Bible tells us that he was seven years old when he became a king. Child of God. A seven year old boy became a king. What does that tell us? It tells us that that your little child that you are not, that you think can't understand the ways of God. That one that you are saying he's just five years old. He can only study his schoolwork, no ABCD, no one, two, three. It's not time for him to know the Bible. 
child of God, that is a mistake. The Bible says that Joash was 70 years old when he became a king. Do you see the kind of responsibilities that God has put even in little children? That is just a pointer to us that we should not despise the little ones because God is said to do mighty things in their lives. But let us go back to our focus, which is the kind of heart that Joash had. The Bible makes us to understand that Joash did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight throughout the lifetime of Jehoiada the priest. What does that tell us? That there was a time in Joash's life that he pleased the Lord, that he did what was pleasing in the eyes of the Most High God. He served the Lord. He made sure that the temple of God was in order. He made sure that the priest would go after the heart of God and do the will of God. His heart was centered on what pleases God. But beloved, let us read the same Second Chronicles from verse 15 to verse 21, the eternal word of the living God. The Bible says that Jehoiada lived to a very old age, finally dying at 130. He was buried among the kings in the city of David because he had done so much good in Israel for God and his temple. But after Jehoiada's death, the leaders of Judah came and bowed before King Joash and persuaded him to listen to their advice. They decided to abandon the temple of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and they worshipped Asherah poles and idols instead. Because of this sin, divine anger fell on Judah and Jerusalem. Yet the Lord sent prophets to bring them back to him. The prophets warned them, but still the people would not listen. Let me stop here first of all. Now, the Bible tells us about, this, about Jehoiada, the priest of God who lived very long. The Bible says he finally died when he was 130 years old. And he was buried among the kings of Israel. He was a priest. He wasn't a king. But because of the kind of life that he lived, the priest was a priest that guided Joash to do the will of God. He lived a life in the interest of the kingdom of God. The Bible says because he had done so much good in Israel. Love, let us think about that. Because he has done so much good in Israel. The Bible says he was buried among the kings. He did good in Israel. He did good to the people of God. He did good to the temple of God. He guarded Joash well in the, in the path of righteousness. But the Bible says, after Jehoiada's death, the leaders of Judah came and bowed before King Joash and persuaded him to listen to their advice. Child of God, our focus today is persuasion, the strategy of Satan. Persuasion, the strategy of Satan. Once upon a time, a king had been trained in righteousness. The priest trained him in the way of the Lord and he was following. But beloved, after the priest left his life, the time whereby he was supposed to execute the truth that he knows, the Bible makes us to understand that the leaders of Judah came and bowed before King Joash and persuaded him to listen to their advice. Persuasion. Child of God, what is persuasion? It is a process which a person or a group tries to influence a person to change his or her belief or behavior. Persuasion, a process through which a person or a group tries to influence another person or group to change their belief or their behavior. Look at the life of Joash, a man walking in the will of God. 
A man walking in the path of righteousness once upon a time was persuaded to change his belief, to change the way he does things, to change his act against God. The Bible says they, they, when they persuaded him and he listened to their advice, what did he do? They decided to abandon the temple of the Lord God of their ancestors. He listened to the advice of men contrary to the will of God and it changed him. It changed him to a man that abandoned the will of God, abandoned the house of God. This house of God, child of God, represents where the presence of God truly dwells and where the will of God is self, not the will of man. Let us understand the condition of that temple of the living God. The Bible says that he, they began to do what? Worship idols instead of the living God. Persuasion, the strategy of Satan. This king that was on track, doing the will of God all of a sudden, replaced the voice of God with the voice of men. Listen to men. And what did he do in his life? Beloved, let us go back to that Second Chronicles, verse, chapter 24, verse 18. It says, they decided to abandon the temple of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and they worshipped Asherah poles and idols instead. Because of this sin, divine anger fell on Judah and Jerusalem. Divine anger fell on Judah and fell on Jerusalem. Child of God, when Joash listened to the persuasion of men, listened to the voice of the enemy, you know what happened? It brought down the anger and the judgment of God. This morning, the warning of God to me and to you is that we should be careful, the voices that we listen to. We should be mindful of who is persuading us. We should be mindful of who is guarding us. Be mindful of where you are taking advice from, beloved child of God. Because once upon a time, a man that was on track, on the right path of destiny, listened to a human being, listened to a group of people above the voice of God, and he changed his destiny. Change his life forever. Brought the curse of God. Not just upon him. But the Bible says it fell on Judah. And it fell on Jerusalem. Verse 19 of that second Chronicles 24 says. Yet the Lord sent prophets to bring them back to him. The prophets warned them. But still the people would not listen. Then the spirit of of God came upon Zechariah, son of Jehoiada the priest, and he stood before the people and said, This is what God says. Why do you disobey the Lord's command and keep yourself from prospering? You have abandoned the Lord, and now he has abandoned you. Then the leaders plotted to kill Zechariah, and King Joash ordered that they stone him to death in the courtyard of the Lord's temple. Beloved child of God, listen and follow what persuasion, what taking advice contrary to the will of God did in a life of a king and a nation. The same way is affecting the lives of families, changing things in groups and in the bodies that matter before the living God. The Bible says God in his faithfulness sent prophets, sent messengers to them. But you know what persuasion did? It hardened the heart of the people. It hardened the heart of the people that it, from listening to one wrong advice, the condition of the heart became hardened against God. Why? Persuasion is a strategy in the hands of the living, of the devil rather. Persuasion is a strategy in the hand of the devil. So, child of God, who is persuading you? Look at the consequences. It can change your heart forever. It can change your heart forever. 
Do you know what, what happened again? The Bible says that the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, that priest that really honored God. He stood, and what did he say? He said, because you have disobeyed the Lord's command, it has kept you from prosper prospering. You know what happened? That advice that Joash took, look at part of the effect it had in his life and in the nation of Israel. The Bible says he stopped them from prospering. Child of God, you want to prosper. If you want to prosper, mind who is advising you. Mind where you are taking advice from, especially a child of God. A child of God that is being led by the Spirit of God. That was the life of Joash. A righteous life that listened to the persuasion of men. And you know what happened? Disobedience came in. Prosperity was taken away. You know what happened? Then they became people that their heart was so hardened and so wicked that they began to plot to kill a servant of the living God. You see how far one negative advice can go. Do you see that you, a child of God, hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, walking in line with the will of God, you need to be very careful. I need to be very careful what our ears listen to. The conversations that we hear, where we carry our issues, our problems to the people we allow into our lives, it matters so much to the extent that the same King Joash ordered that the son of Zechariah the priest, the man that led him in the will of God, the man that married wives for him, the man that guarded him wisely, the same Joash was the one that ordered that his son Zechariah be killed for declaring the mind of God. Think about how far an evil counsel can go. See how far an evil advice can go. God is opening this up for us so that we will be careful the voices that are speaking to us. So that we will be careful about those giving us counsel. Is it from the spirit of God or is it from the spirit of Satan? The Lord who is persuading you. It is a strategy that Satan has been using right from the beginning. You see what happened in Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7. The Bible says the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. The woman replied, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we will not, we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful, and its fruit, fruit looks delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it will give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. Child of God, what is persuasion? It is a process through which one person or group tries to influence a person or group to change their belief and their behavior. Look at an example here. What was Satan doing here? What was the serpent doing here? He had an aim. His aim was to change the belief of Eve. His aim was to cause her to think differently from the truth that she does. It is a strategy that Satan has been using right from the beginning. He is still using the same strategy. It was the same strategy that he used against King George. It is the same strategy that he is using against God's people in this end time. Persuasion. Causing you to change your belief. Came to Eve. Who believed what God had told them about that apple. About that tree that God said. We should not eat it. 
But what did Satan, his strategy? He began to convince her. He began to market his heart to her. He began to lie to her. The same way, child of God, the enemy is sending different people to convince you on that matter that you know the will of God concerning. He began to talk to him. Oh, what did he say? If you eat this fruit, you will have wisdom. If you eat this fruit, you will be like God. He said, God, he said, the serpent said, oh, no, 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 you won't die. You won't die. What was he doing? Persuading her to change her belief, to change her mind. He said, God say, he said, she said, God said, your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it. Sorry, he said, God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Persuasion, advice, counsel. He had an objective in his mind to make Eve to change her belief. And beloved, what happened? The Bible says, verse 6, the woman was convinced. You see? Just like Joash was convinced to drop the way of God and then to begin to do the will of the people, which led him to abandon the temple of God, abandon the will of God for his life. Child of God, Satan is still using the same strategy, convincing God's people to go outside of God's will. To go outside of God's will. Look at him again in Judges chapter 16, beloved. I am reading from verse 15 to verse 21. The Bible says, Then Delilah pouted, How, how can you tell me I love you? When you don't share your secrets with me, you've made fun of me three times now and you still haven't told me what makes you so strong. She tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick to death. Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut, he confessed, for I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as anyone else. Delilah realized he has finally told her the truth. So she went to the Philistine rulers, come back one more time, she said, for he has finally told me his secret. So the Philistine rulers returned with the money in their hands. Delilah lured Samson to sleep on his head on her lap. And then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. In that way, she began to bring him down and his strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. Then he woke up. He thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. So the Philistines captured him and got out his eyes and took him to Gaza, where he was bound with bronze, bronze chain, and forced to grind grain in the prison. Beloved, what was happening here? Look at the spirit of persuasion walking in the life of Samson, walking through Delilah, the spirit of Jezebel, walking through men. He walks through men, walking through a girlfriend, a side chick that he kept very close to himself. And beloved, you know what? She began to persuade him. The spirit of Satan began to walk through her. A child of God in Nazareth, one that was dedicated to the Lord, one who had a purpose, who had a destiny to do the will of God, brought an agent of Satan very close. And what strategy again? The same one he used on Eve. He began to persuade. She began to persuade. The Bible says, Delilah pouted, how can you tell me I love you? When you don't share your secret with me. The Lord, can you see? Samson went to love who he wasn't supposed to love. Child of God. Association. 
And what did the enemy want from him? His key. The devil is always looking for how to take keys from God's people. Remember that Jesus said, Behold, I give you the keys of the kingdom. And Samson's keys was his consecration, a secret that God gave to him. But when the spirit of Satan that was so close to him began to persuade him, began to persuade him to, to do what? To change his belief. Because he had believed that this secret should not be let out. But what happened? After that spirit continued to persuade, continued to persuade, the Bible says she tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick unto death. That means something was there. It was sweet in his ears. He had it day one. He had it day two. He had it in the morning. He had it in the afternoon. Because Satan don't give up, he does a lot of marketing. Don't you see the way Coca-Cola, don't you see the way uh, businesses market their products? Why is Coca-Cola so popular? Part of it is advertising, child of God. Satan knows how to persuade and see the way people are drinking it. Satan knows how to persuade. Advert is to change your belief. And so that agent of the devil was there advertising to, to, to something. Tell me this, tell me this. Persuaded him, the Bible says, finally, Samson shared his secret with her. Samson shared his secret with her. And what did, what happened? Delilah finally realized he has finally told her the truth. You know that Satan, there are things about you, beloved, Satan don't know. That's why we need to know when to keep our mouth shut. Persuaded, came as a friend until Samson finally give, gave in. And when Delilah realized that her persuasion has worked, she has finally convinced this man to go against his belief, to go against the will of God. What happened? The Bible says she called the Philistines. You know what Delilah did? The Bible says she lured Samson to sleep with his head on her lap, and then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. Child of God, do you see what this wicked spirit did? It made Samson sleep a sleep that they will even shave his hair. He couldn't wake up. What kind of sleep is that? What kind of demonic sleep is that? That a man will sleep to the extent that they shave off the seven locks on his head. They shave number one, they shave number two, they shave number three. Slept that Jezebel sleep until everything left him. But what happened? At the moment she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. He woke up. He woke up at that one. But when the clipper was on his head, when the blade was bumping up the glory of God over his life, he was in so much sleep. Why? The power of persuasion. The things that happen when the spirit of Jezebel convinces persuasion is a strategy of Satan. God wants us to know. God wants us to know because, beloved, when you let man's voice overshadow the voice of God in your life, can separate you from God forever and ever. When you let men take you out of God's will for you, when you let men know the secrets of God over your life, you know what happens? When you let men take advantage of you, did, did Delilah not take advantage of something? She took a great advantage of him because she was paid money. She was paid money. She worked with the enemy against the destiny of something. She did what physical strength couldn't do. Because the Philistines had severally tried to capture something. They couldn't. But just the persuasion of a Jezebelic woman changed everything for, 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 for something. Beloved, are you there? You are having extramarital affairs. You know, our generation have a way of giving Satan all manner of names. Say, side chick. Among brethren, even girlfriends. You see what it does? It took off the glory of God over his life. You know what it did at the end? It gouged out his eyes. He became a grinder, grinding grains. 
Grinding grain, change him a strong man because of persuasion. Child of God, look at what happened. Satan is stealing the vision of many. It's an assignment that he has had from Genesis. He comes to steal the vision of great men. He comes to steal the vision of great men, child of God. Look at it in Luke chapter 4. I read verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing at that time and became very hungry. Child of God, let us learn something here. Satan loves to test the spirit of God. Satan loves to test the spirit of God. The Bible says that Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of the Holy Spirit. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And do you know what was happening there? He was tempted by Satan. How many days? 40 days. 40 days. And so, child of God, if you are anointed, know that temptation will come. Know that Satan will come and test that spirit. That's the same thing that happened to Joash. Joash was trained by this man of God. When, this man, when the priest finally left, was it not a time for Joash to execute the truth that he knew? But that was the time that Satan knew how to send his agents to him to persuade him, to test whether he is truly filled of the Spirit of God. To test whether he is really led by the Spirit of God. And so the Bible says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. So Satan likes to test the Holy Spirit. He likes to test the Spirit of God that is inside us. He likes to test the Spirit of God that is inside us. And the Word of God shows us how to overcome him. Let us look at it from the same Luke form. From verse 3 to verse 12. He says, then the devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. And Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone. Then the devil took him up and revealed to him the kingdoms of the world in a moment to give, I will give you the glory of these kingdoms and authority over them. And the and the devil said, because they are mine to give anyone I please, I will give it all to you if you will worship me. Jesus replied, the scripture says, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, jump up. For the scripture says he will order his angels to protect you and guard you. And they will hold you up with their hands so you won't hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scripture say, also says you must not test the Lord your God. Then the dev when the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. Child of God. Do we know how to overcome this persuasion of script of the devil? Beloved, Jesus has made it clear to us. The answer is the scripture says. The scripture says. The scripture says. Knowing what the scripture said. When these wicked men came to Joash, did Joash not know the scriptures? Was it not Joash that was telling them that what Moses said, Moses said we should collect taxes and use it to repair the temple of God. He knew that. But what happened? That when the enemy came in, Joash could not tell them what the scripture says. Compromise, child of God. Compromise. You know the truth. Men please us. Are you standing for the truth that you know? Are we like the three Hebrew boys that refused to bow to that statue? Are we compromising our stance? Because child of God, the temptations that Jesus faced are the same ones that we face. The Bible says, Satan first of all came when he was hungry. The temptation of bread. Food temptation. I have not eaten because of my stomach. Yet Jesus said it, man shall not live by bread alone. Man shall not live by bread alone. 
So you see, every excuse that we are giving that is because I don't have food. That's why I went after that woman's husband. It is just to feed my stomach. Jesus is saying, you and I should not live by bread alone. That means that when we are hungry, we should live by the word of God. Satan came again. Jesus will say, no, the scripture says. Joash was supposed to give that answer and say, no, the scripture says. But because of the glory of this world, I want to build a car, a house. I want to drive a big car. I want my village people to know that I have finally arrived. And because of that, brother, you are compromising in your office, signing signatures and taking money that don't belong to you. It is the persuasion of Satan. You see, he came to persuade Jesus. It is a strategy that he has been using right from Genesis chapter what? Chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Then imagine when he started using that trick from. And so he came to Jesus with the same thing. Every topic he brought up, Jesus would say the scripture says. And so is the will of God for us to study our Bible, you see. That's why the Bible says we should study the word of God so that we'll show ourselves our approved unto, up unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the scriptures, rightly understanding the truth. That's why, child of God, read your Bible. Read your Bible. You can know God. You can hear him for yourself, child of God. He couldn't tell what the scripture said. And because of that, do you know what happened? Joash, you see how his life went down to the point that he became a murderer. Child of God, how can we overcome? Genesis chapter 39. Let us go to Genesis 39. How to overcome the persuasion of Satan. I'm reading from verse 6 to verse 12. The Bible says, and I read, So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he didn't worry about a thing except the kind of food to eat. Joseph was a very handsome and well-built young man. And Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. Come and sleep with me, she demanded. But Joseph refused. Look! He told her, my master trusts me with everything in his entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How can I do such a wicked thing? It will be a great sin against God. Verse 10, she kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day. But he refused to sleep with her and he kept out of her way as much as possible. One day, however, no one was around when he went to do his work. She came and grabbed him by his cloak, demanding, come on, sleep with me. Joseph tore himself away, and he left his cloak in her hand, and he ran from the house. Child of God, you are not the most beautiful that have been created. I am so beautiful. I am so beautiful. That is why many think that because of this beauty, oh, I will use my beauty to take advantage of men. Child of God, the Bible says Joseph was very handsome and well-built. It's not today that God began to make handsome and well-built people. And so, child of God, they say the, the, most, the beautiful ones are not even yet born. Because a time will come whereby we will be given new bodies. Our glory will shine from one level to the other. But child of God, let us know what to, how to apply the beauty that God has given us. It is so important that we know how to deal with this beauty. Because in the name of I'm beautiful, in the name of I am so handsome, many men are thinking that they are God's gift to women. And so because of that, jumping from one bed of adultery and fornication to the other. Child of God, you say you are so beautiful. Remember that Queen Esther was very beautiful also. But use the beauty to glorify God. Child of God, your beauty, my beauty, is for the glory of God. Because beauty has become a weapon that Satan uses to persuade men into sin. Because Joseph was handsome, the spirit of Jezebel came. And what did he come to do? Persuasion. 
sleep with me, sleep with me. The same temptation that many of us are facing. Sleep with me, sleep with me. You are so beautiful, I want you on my bed. Child of God is part of Satan's strategy. How did the word of God teach us to deal with situations like that? The Bible says in verse 10, she kept putting pr uh, pressure on Joseph day after day. He refused to sleep with her and he kept out of her way as much as possible. Child of God, it is the will of God that when we know where our persuasion to do evil is coming from, let us stay away from there as much as possible. Let us stay away from there as much as possible, child of God. Let us stay away from those ones that we know that what they are telling us is not of God. The Bible says flee from every appearance of evil. That was the strategy that Joseph made very clear to us. Even when, because of his duty, he could not afford at times them coming together. You know, the time she grabbed him, he didn't say it's too late, let me just give her one kiss. No, the Bible says he fled. And so God expects us to flee. That's the only time we flee from the devil when we know he wants to grab us into sin. And so, child of God, if you know those that are persuading you to change your belief, it is God's will for us to flee from them. You know why? Eve didn't flee. She lost the garden. She didn't only lost the garden. She didn't only lose the enjoyment, child of God. You know what happened? She also lost her son. Look at Joash. What happened? He only reigned for 40 years. He could have reigned longer than that for God to have chosen him at seven years. God had great plans for him. But because of that, look at what happened. He lost his prosperity. He became a wicked man. He sinned by killing a servant of God right in the same temple that he was building, right in the same temple that he was restoring. He became a murderer there. Why? He allowed men to persuade him. What about Samson? Samson lost his eyes. He died with his enemies. He died a death that was not his own. The death that was not meant for him. Just like this persuasion is killing many before their time. Killing many of God's children. Opening the doors to the, to the judgment of God over their lives. May the Lord have mercy on all of us. We need to be vigilant. Who is persuading us? We need to be vigilant. Because child of God, the consequences is highly regrettable. The consequences of falling into negative persuasion is highly regrettable. And we can see it. Look at Second Chronicles, again 24. Look at from verse 17 all the way to verse, verse, verse 25. You see what happened in that place. The consequence was so great for Joash. The consequence was so great for Joash. You see, it got to the, we talked about how much the judgment of God came down. The anger of God came down. He became a murderer. And if we read from verse 22, they said, he says, that was how King Joash repaid Jehoiada for his loyalty by killing his son. Zachariah's last word as he died were, may the Lord see what they are doing and avenge my death. Verse 23, in the spring of the year, the Aramean armies marched against Joash. They invaded Judah and Jerusalem and killed all the leaders of the nation. They sent all the plunder back to their king in Damascus. Although the Aramean attacked with only a small army, the Lord helped them to conquer the much larger army of Judah. The people of Judah had abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors. So judgment was carried out against Joash. The Arameans withdrew, leaving Joash severely wounded. But his own officials plotted to kill him for murdering the son of Jehoiada the priest. They also assassinated him as he lay in bed. Then he was buried in the city of David, but not in the royal cemetery. Look at the end of what persuasion does. Look at how Joash ended. Look at how this nation, look at the experiences that they had. You know, 
He killed Zechariah's son. Repaired wickedness for loyalty. Sorry, he killed Jehoiada, Zechariah's father. Repaying evil for good that was done to him. He killed his son. And when that son was dying, he pronounced a judgment that may God see what they are doing and avenge my death. Child of God, God is seeing. God is seeing. Everything we are doing, God is seeing. God is seeing and God avenges. That's why we need to be very careful. When we repair evil for good, God is seeing. God saw what was done there and what happened. Child of God, the, the Aramean army marched against Joash, invaded Judah and Jerusalem, killed all the leaders of the nations. What happened there? The same leaders that were persuading. What happened? Judgment came upon them. God released his judgment. And how did it come down? Death. They died physical death. Under the judgment of God. They died. The Bible says that it was a small army. Small army that attacked Judah. Judah had a larger army. But God walked with their enemies against them. The consequences of turning away from the living God is highly regrettable, child of God. The price is so much you can't pay it, I cannot pay it. All the persuasion to go against the will of God, what did it, what did Josh achieve from it? What did Judah get from it? The Bible says that the people of Judah had abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors. So judgment was carried out against Josh. Judgment is real. God sees it. God will judge it. Child of God. And what happened? Joash was severely wounded. Not slightly wounded. Severely wounded. And while on his sick bed, what happened? They came and killed him there. The scriptures was fulfilled over their lives. And so, child of God, the, the end of believers who allow men, persuade them from following the will of God is highly regrettable. It's never glorious. It's never glorious. And so we need to take heed and watch the association that we keep. Who is counseling us? Who are we listening to? Who is advising us? And the word of God crowns it all in Psalm 1 to us. Very clear. Psalm 1 and I read. From verse 1 to verse 6, it says, All oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along a river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do, but not the wicked. They are like worthless chaff, scattered by the wind. They will be condemned in the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. But the Lord watches over the path of the godly, for the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Child of God, has he not told us in his word? Is it not clear? Say, oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Joash was a very joyous man. When he followed the advice of God, when he didn't follow the advice of the wicked, he, he was fruitful. When he didn't join the mockers, he was fruitful. When his delight was in the law of his God, child of God, he enjoyed prosperity. He enjoyed help from the Lord. Child of God. But the Bible says, but not the wicked. The path of the righteous is different from the path of the wicked. The path of the godly is different from the path of the wicked. The path of the godly, you know, doing God's will, following the advice of God, following the counsel of God, delighting in the word of God, meditating on it day and night, is like a tree that is planted along the river bank. Then that life will be fruitful. It will produce results. For child of God, when we begin to take side with the wicked, our destiny will now become like that of the wicked. Even if we are started on a godly path, the Bible says the wicked are like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. Worthless chaff will always be scattered by the wind. 
Judgment will always come on what less child. Child of God, can you compare a tree with a child? A worthless, a useless child will always face the judgment of the storm of the wind. And so when we leave godly paths and begin to associate with the wicked, our life will become a chaff that is, only, that is useless and is being scattered, just like it ended with Joash. Why? Because the Bible has already said it. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. Sinners will have no place among the godly. And so if we are, we are godly and we allow sinners to come and have a place and begin to persuade us, beloved, it destroys our destiny and the end is never glorious. But if we choose to follow the leading of the Lord, remember that the path of the righteous, the path of the godly, the Bible says God watches over that path. We'll see that God will watch over our lives. And even if we go through brief affliction, it will, lead us, it will lead us to restoration, strength, and cause God to put us on a strong foundation, on a solid foundation, just like he promised in 1 Peter 5 verse 10. But child of God, know that the path of the wicked leads to destruction. It's not God's will for us to allow the devil and his agents to lead us to destruction through persuasion. And so it's God's will that we know what is written because Satan is still using that strategy. He wants us to be prepared. He wants us to be vigilant so that when he comes, we'll be able to tell him what Jesus told him. It is written. It is written. So that when he comes, we'll be able to flee away, even if it means leaving our cloak in his hands. Beloved child of God, Jesus is coming soon. And are you there? You are not born again. Jesus is coming soon. Will you pray with me and say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. Forgive me my sins. Wash me in your precious blood. Write my name in the book of life. Grant me the grace to follow you in total obedience. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord bless his words in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus.